guys and welcome back to my channel for another vlog. Not the vlog that I was intending this to be. This is a bit of reality. I've come here really early. I think I was here about 10 past six. <laughs> half marked, well, I marked out yesterday but I only had half a wheelbarrow. I was like, I'll just wait until tomorrow. But yeah, I came here nice and early and let the ponies out so that they could go out for a couple of hours. I am loving the lighter mornings. We've only got one more week, haven't we? Until we'll then be noticing lighter evenings, which is really exciting. Today is also Mother's Day. So wishing all of you a very happy Mother's Day, um, whether that is of the two-legged kind or the four-legged kind like me. But yeah, I hope you all have a nice day if you're up to anything nice. My mum's going off for walks with both of my brothers, like one walk this morning, one walk this afternoon, and then I'm gonna catch up with her when I've got back from where we are venturing out today. So as I mentioned, we were supposed to be starting our eventing season at Morton today. And obviously I would be long gone by now. It's about half past nine, I think. I would be obviously long gone if I was competing, but I sadly withdrew. I kind of messed up a little bit, I did do a little bit of a brain dump post on Instagram, so apologies if this is duplicating that, but in case you don't follow me on Instagram, I uh, want to give you a bit of the lowdown. Nothing, obviously, is wrong. Um, we had a fantastic time at camp, but we didn't get out on grass, so that was playing on my mind. Courses down here, um, the closest one that I thought was going to be open doesn't actually open until, I want to say, the 8th of April. So I was struggling to know whether I could get on grass. The weather here this week, like, you just look down in this field. It has been, it's just absolutely tipped it down, um, like, all week. So then that was making it harder to know, like, whether I could get out on anywhere. Um, I went up one day this week and just did literally walk, trot and canter on both reins in my field. And it was so squelchy. And I was like, oh, I could jump on this. Dad said I could put jumps around the whole of 10 acres. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. But then I noticed, I knew I hadn't been balloted from Morton, but I was on the wait list. Now, I was only third. And I know in previous events when I've been on the wait list that you can, three isn't bad. I've been worse. I've been like seventh or eighth and I've still got in. So, and I don't mind on a normal occasion, I don't mind it being last minute. Like if, if they let me know on say Saturday at five o'clock that I was going the next day, that wouldn't bother me in normal goings. With the uncertainty of the ground and that playing a bit in my head, I feel like we haven't done competition dressage or show jumping again for a while. We've done a lot of arena eventing, so I wasn't really worried about the solid fences, but it was just all those little, little dots and they just all added up. And I was like, do you know what? You also, if you withdraw when you're on the wait list, you get a full refund. If I was to get in and then say they cancelled the second day because the ground, that was something else that I was thinking about. If the ground was bad after they had run one day of competition and then they cancel it and abandon it, I would then only get 15%. So like I say, lots of little dots all joined up and I decided to make the decision, sadly to withdraw. My eventing calendar at the beginning has rerouted a little bit something else that happened this week sorry this is proper blabbing now was i went to look at the qualifying list for aston the arena eventing championships that kind of has been my goal throughout the whole of winter and i noticed that my name wasn't on the list so i've sent off an email and it was just a mistake from um, b and chard both apologized absolutely fine but it's then my sister-in-law, Kerry ann qualified as well. And we're like, do we want to travel? It's going to be about six hours each way. So that's 12 hours of traveling for a five-minute round of arena eventing. Don't get me wrong. I love Aston and I really do want to ride again in that amazing arena, especially arena cross country, like where they go through the water. And they've got like, it's very much like Pontus Ball. They've got a bit of everything, um, different terrain. And I really do want to ride there. But just for the fact that it's such a long way and with her being a little bit spooky, like maybe if I'd qualified for two classes, maybe that would make it a little bit more worthwhile. But I've decided to knock that on the head <laughs> and I think I'm going to reroute myself to a Cotswold Cup one, which is further than what we usually travel for like a BE, but it's closer than Aston and I also get to do all three phases. So that's actually the following weekend. And then I'm already entered for Bovington as well. So 
yeah not yet starting our eventing um not now till the middle of april which i'm absolutely fine about because almost like making that decision i felt like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders because i was like oh, what do i do do i just hang it out do i wait do i try and get a grasp and then i wanted to get schooling but actually it's been nicer now she's had a bit of a quieter chilled hacking week after camp last weekend and now today which is the point of this vlog and i was going to say this is going to be short and sweet but the intro is already stupidly long um we are heading to Coleraine to do some show jumping so i am excited to put into practice what we learned at camp with fred and like the final three strides find my line stay still don't argue with her if she argues with me ignore her put more leg on stay on your line and over to Addy basically jump the jump so I'm excited to give that we've entered two classes we're going to do the 80 and the 90 so if we are a little bit spooky I think somebody commented on my arena eventing at Pontispool and said oh we would always do two um and I yes I think that is great and I'll be honest I've been really rude and not replied but I did see it and I totally agree I think for Addy at the moment or back then I was just a bit concerned about the 90 solid fences and being spooky I think I was just a bit nervous and also like two rounds is quite a lot for her whether she would be tired that's me just making excuses for her basically but I feel show jumping is definitely in our capabilities we've done two classes before so I'm hoping so I don't know if it's indoors or outdoors today but if it was indoors again oh that sun is bright which is nice because the week's been awful if it's indoors she was a little bit spooky last time so i thought actually we'll go in and that was combined training so i couldn't do another round but yeah we've done the 80 and the 90 so hopefully yeah we'll get all the spookiness if there is any there might not be not after last weekend out the way and then do the 90 but I was on time and now I feel like I've blabbed on for quite a while. Um, I'm going to get my car loaded, pull that out the top and then get the ponies in. Not a lot, to be honest, to get ready, but I'm actually really excited to wear my jacket again because I feel like I haven't worn my show jacket in ages because we've been doing arena eventing. It's been like cross country colours and body protector, but I'm actually looking forward to, yeah, not that I don't look smart in my cross country colours, but I'm just looking forward to wearing my jacket, basically. We have arrived, I think. They're running about 10 minutes late, which is fine. But I'm coming up now just to quickly walk the course and it's outdoors, which I'm really pleased about. I feel like you just have a little bit more room when it's outdoors. I'm not looking for number one. I thought that was number one. Right, let's just concentrate a minute. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know what the height this is now. I think it's like 60. Oh, it's so nice that the sun is shining, isn't it? Yeah. We, I'm walked the course. They're running about 10 minutes behind. So I don't need to get you out quite yet, but I think I'm going to get myself dress so i am ready but the course is looking nice a lot of space and time between the fences it's a long way around like one two three four all the way around the outside of the arena but i actually think that is going to help us today because i've got enough time to make sure we have got the right gears move her up in her gear and then balance her again as we're coming into the final three strides and then over to her so that is my plan of attack today hopefully um She's all okay and is, don't argue with me too much, all right, about the gears, but yeah, I want to have a good proper warm up as well, like really not a rushed one and spend a lot of time just walking, getting her brain, realising that we are jumping today, we're competing and yeah, try and not just get on her and it's like, wow, we're going, go in there, nice chill, walk around and yeah, excited for it. I'm actually looking forward to it. It's nice that the sun's shining, like I said, and the course is looking good it's outdoors which is what i'm hoping for so lots of positives already for the day and there's going to be a lot more to come as well isn't there? Yes. it's nice to feel all smart again um we are good to go aren't we you're busy munching away but time to get on and head up and give the 80 a go to begin with we're doing as i said two classes we've got about an hour in between each which would be nice because i can bring it back here let the adrenaline go down and then go and give the 90 a go but first of all focusing on the 80 the gears the canter and keeping still and quiet and leaving the jumping down to her.
change your process. I was really pleased with how Addy warmed up. It was nice, calm, collected, a little bit excitable, but nothing major. Then when we got into the arena, I did feel that she raised and her adrenaline went up. I gave her some reassuring pats, a big circle, and then came into fence one, which as you saw, she came in a little bit sideways. Thankfully, it was only a cross pole. So we could have kind of done it from any from a walk or trot anything we should have been able to get over it to it but we did thankfully get a couple of straight strides just before and then you see she had a little bit of a spook there at fence two now she's not actually wanting to go anywhere near the fence or should i say more to the outside of the arena um the jump itself here she's just fighting with me a little bit she's like no i'm not sure i'm not sure so i just allow that adrenaline to come down as fred had taught me at camp last week i felt like i gave her long enough just said then i'm not very happy with that addy that isn't what i want and then gave her enough room got onto our line and then we jumped it actually pretty well um here she's just trying to be argumentative with me because i'm trying to work through those gears um, a little bit of a half stride there, but still got over it nicely. And we got to a nice stride there for fence four. Now here she still spooks a bit around the corner. And I tried to, I've tried to up the, the gear and then try to balance as I've seen my line, which again, she jumps that quite nicely. And again here for fence six, just trying to get onto that line, not let her fall out. As you could see, she fell out to her outside shoulder there a little bit, but we still got a nice, jump over fence six number seven i saw a long one addy thankfully went for it we did end up being disunited and the canter was getting quite long so actually just having that little bit of a reset back to trot pick up canter again is exactly what we needed and then coming down for the double again the canter just gets a little bit long so that last stride within the two strides was quite short now we're disunited around here. I wish I had actually brought it back, but I think I was actually saying to her, sort your legs, sort your legs. But I saw a nice stride, we got it. And actually she sorted her legs out a couple strides before the fence, so that was okay. And then here we're coming around to the final fence and she didn't spook at the step. So a big positive there, but she does have a little bit of a whoop spook in there. But otherwise we ended better than we started. Good recovery. Well, that wasn't quite how I envisioned that round going, if I'm honest. Very, very spooky into fence one and number two, admittedly. And I know this and I'm annoyed at myself, but I'm not going to beat myself up too much because I did it right the second time. But I should have left her longer looking at the fence, made her walk into that, into the fence and into... I think it's more on the side of the arena that she was spooking at, not the actual fence itself. So I wish I had done that on the first time round, but I did it correctly on the second. Then I gave her a little tap to say, no, that's not okay. That's not, it's not what I want. <laughs> um, and then as the round went on, I felt that she got better and better and started listening to me, not too argumentative, but it was just all a little bit chaotic. But I'm hoping that now we've come here, adrenaline's gone down, we go back in, warm up jump a bit bigger fences and uh, hopefully the 90 is going to go better than that last round. Let's put that out of our mind now. Let's just focus on the next one. But she didn't like, she didn't knock any poles down or anything like that. So when she jumps, she jumps lovely and she's more than capable. So just got to still keep getting that experience. But fingers crossed, like I say, we've got this for the 90.
Now I did actually jump another jump in the warm up after her knocking it, um, but Chris had already started to walk up to the top. So you can see there, she was still a little bit spooky at the step, but we had many more straight strides before fence one and she flew over fence two with no issue. We just had to quickly correct our canter lead there. And we had a little bit of a half stride, the canter just getting a little bit long. I think I was just pushing her a little bit, but we regained it back on that related distance to fence four. Again, a little bit of a spook to that end corner, but recovered again well and jumped to number five, really lovely. And then coming down. So I've tried to push the canter on there a little bit and then coming around this corner, I'm just trying to balance her back onto a hox. And she didn't fall out the shoulder as much as she did in the first round, but unfortunately we did have that number six down. Here she was quite argu argumentative with me, so it just made us have that half stride again. But I wanted to reset it, come back to trot, canter on again, again push up the canter, then come around this corner, balance, sit still, and then we got a nice couple of strides in that double, actually nicer strides than we did in the 80. She's just starting to go a little bit on the forehand, so I don't know whether she was just getting a little bit tired, but she still was jumping really well. Like there, we had a lovely stride. She jumped it up and over nicely. And then here again, I'm just balancing that canter, coming round to the final fence. But unfortunately we did knock that one as well, but a huge improvement from the first round. Back home again. Oh, you're not coming out. You're not getting out. <laughs> she knows. I may have picked up a little bit of a cheese toasty. <laughs> I picked up a cheese toasty on the way back. And she knows that she could smell it because she was wanting to get back in the car whilst I was unhitching, which is very unlike her. Um, there isn't actually anything left in there. There might be like a little tiny bit of cheese or something. So she, she can have it. Fill her boots. Um, the back of it's open. But we're back, aren't we? Like madam. Just, it is frustrating, I can't lie. I don't feel like my riding is bad that is causing any of it, but it's just frustrating. And as lots of them have just said out there, like she's just young and perhaps getting a little bit cocky. Maybe he's like knowing what she's doing and thinks that she can do it without me. Um, but we completed it. She was much better in the 90 for not being quite as spooky, but just a bit argumentative. And I'm trying my hardest not to react to her arguing with me. And even sometimes when she's throwing her head up, I'm like, I haven't got your head, just go forward. Um, so we just need to work on those gears, get the strength in the gears, which I knew that before even jumping today. But it's lovely to not be afraid of a 90, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't, those jumps today, I really didn't feel, <laughs> I told you she'd have the card. You got the card, thanks very much. <laughs> Let's pop that in the bin, shall we? Um, oh, now she's gonna have a carrot to finish it off. Yeah, I'm not, oh, I don't know where I was going with that. You think you're done, don't you? But you've got to stay in now whilst I go for a nice hack with Friday, a speedy hack, because then I'm meeting my mum for Mother's Day walk. But it is what it is. I am go. I've, I've actually run out of balancer and I need to message blue chip. So I am wondering, because I know that they do the super concentrated balancer like calming. And I just wonder if that might help take that edge off and just help her focus a little bit, because that's what I feel we're lacking is the focus on what actually the job is. I was, that's what I was saying. I'm not afraid of the height. She makes the height feel, even when we're on a rubber stride, dodgy stride, I still don't feel like it's hard work to get over them. Um, because she was a bit arguing, whether I wasn't getting my line early enough, maybe, I still felt like we would have those silly, like, half strides. And I felt like when I come around the corner, I can sort of, I see it. But then because of a bit of the arguing and the head flicky and I don't want to just to bowl on like really quickly into it. I want to keep my leg on, but it's just causing us to have those half the strides and things like that. So all in all, just another day gaining experience. I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, I've got an action plan. See if Blue Chip have got, yeah, calming balancer. Give her that. 
and then go from there. We're up at Coral Rain again next weekend. We are also, she's got a busy weekend next weekend. <laughs> We're doing the Howard Academy training with BE, which is with Cameron and another instructor that I have forgotten her name. I want to say it's Lizzie. I don't know why, or Sarah. So we've got that on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday, we have got the area challenge, which we are doing as the AT Riding Club qualifier. So looking forward to that. I feel maybe another weekend of like intense training. I don't know. Wow, well, I say intense training. It's two lessons um, on the Saturday, and then just going to be one round on the Sunday. So it's not like intense training, but it would perhaps be nice to be training, be focused, working on the gears and the canter, ahead like the day before then going and trying to replicate that into a competition round so yeah anyways <laughs> miss i think she's just like thinks that she's missed know it all actually so are you a little bit as well aren't you and then you're gonna go out and have a naked roll which i'm really gonna regret but you look gonky you're muddy we'll go for a hack aren't we yeah we're gonna go for a hack she's like get off me i don't do cuddles mum so yeah thank you guys as always for watching please do like comment and subscribe and until next weekend i will see you see you all then